All right, my friends, welcome to episode 401 of Prof and Dev Play Games, coming to you a little late because I went to see the Foo Fighters. So, you know, worth it. Not a bad choice. I would <laughs> probably choose that. You over... would choose Foo Fighters over recording a podcast? Yeah. Yeah, probably. If that was the choice <laughs> at hand. Yeah. Good choice. Uh, today, me and a bunch of my colleagues bought Foo Fighters tickets for next year. So a bunch of us are going. <laughs> Very exciting. That's cool. Yes, but a lot of Foo Fighters stuff happening right now, um, which is cool because last March I didn't think that would be a thing. So um, anyway, this is Prof and Dev Play Games, episode 401. He is Anthony. He makes games. I have your game. I just need to mail it to you now so I can get it all signed. My oh, daughter true. wants to play it. She's very excited. And I said I had to send it to Anthony to get signed first. Um, and I am Larry. I am a professor. I just play games. Um, and I was grading an essay yesterday. And a student was talking about how they like play video games. And I circled. I was like, ooh, what do you play? I was like, <laughs> <laughs> slow down. <laughs> uh, don't connect with the kids. <laughs> Just let it go. <laughs> They're going to respond with like Roblox or <laughs> Fortnite. And you're going to be like, yeah, I can wait, see Fortnite. Wait. I, feel, <laughs> I feel like Roblox is a little younger. I'm, I was Probably. like an 18 year old. But, yeah. but still, I'm like, they, they grew up. In that up vein, though, it. yeah. Yeah, totally. exactly. It's going to be Minecraft for sure. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 100% and probably Fortnite. Um. <laughs> I almost wrote, what are you playing? I'm playing Baldur's Gate 3. I'm like, Dad, I don't think that's the thing that that's, this kid's playing. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not. Uh, that's a good way I, maybe to learn, be pleasantly learn surprised. English, I guess. Yeah. I've always dreamed of teaching a, a video English through video game class, man. Like some of the text heavy games that mm -hmm. these folks well, play. We can talk about some of that. Uh, when we get to what we're playing. Um, awesome. Yes, we'll talk about some text in games. But until then, we're going to talk about what the fuck has been happening at all these game companies. They're letting people go. Epic let go 16%. Nine, 900 people. Fucking um, hell. Uh, let's hit this. Epic, Tim, Sweeney, layoffs. Let's let's bring up the... What's going on there? Um, Tim Sweeney, $9.6 billion man. Yeah, um, sixteen percent of uh, their employees were divesting Bandcamp and spinning mm -hmm. off most of Super Awesome. Super Awesome, I think, is a marketing ad, marketing yeah. ad thing. Uh, like, yeah. so more of the Bandcamp one. I'm like, why the hell did you buy Bandcamp then? What, like, like a year ago, right? Or a I know, years ago? I'm like, what is the purpose of this? <laughs> like, okay. Um, I think they thought they were going to integrate music more into Fortnite, which they've been doing a little bit, but like... Mm, yeah, oops. I just don't think it's working as well as they want. Um, I want to say... I mean, Harmonix? I knew some Part people got laid off oh, from Harmonix yeah. uh -huh. as well through my LinkedIn. Right, because um, they closed Fuser, or they shut that down a while ago. They did. Harmonix has not had a... They were they're really strong through the rock band era, the guitar hero rock band, like really did that, and they really haven't found a footing since then. Um, yeah. at least something as big as that that to really do do a lot. Yeah, they they did Fuser was the last thing and they did okay. But that's three years ago is when they that did was Fuser. A, yeah, right at the beginning of the they pandemic. Haven't, I haven't heard yeah. anything from them since. Um yep, yep, yep. but they did they, s I want to sell by Viacom, their independent developer. Viacom owned them? Hmm. Yeah, for a while. Um, yeah, interesting. Yeah, they were taught to say to develop musical journeys and gameplay for Fortnite, um, in addition to making musical projects in the metaverse, which all these layoffs were really spun back around to being like, hey, the metaverse <laughs> sucks. Um, not That's not going anywhere. Sweet. Sweeney's not saying that, but it was like, I think they had a, uh, uh, they said something about like, um, yeah, while Fortnite is starting to grow again, the growth is driven primarily by creator content, which yep. with significant revenue share. And this is lower margin business than we had with, uh, Fortnite battle Royale, uh, when B Fortnite battle Royale took off and began funding our expansion, Success with the creator ecosystem is a great achievement, but it means major structural changes for the economics. You could have planned for that. Not mm -hmm. hard. Like, you know that you take less of the revenue. Um, they did all this hiring and buying whenever it was like middle of the pandemic and booming. Like, it's frustrating with Epic 
but it's also in a thing of being like it's a certain level of frustration with the our current state of capitalism, which is you yes. have lots of money, you should spend it and grow. And yep. I'm it's like, are you sure? Is that the capitalism. right thing? Is that the right you, thing? Maybe you could just save the money and not grow exponentially into all these bets that probably aren't going to pay off. Um, just just have stability and stop gambling yeah. with people's lives because it's not a bad thing to make five billion dollars a year, but apparently it is if you're not making more billion dollars the next yeah. year. Um, because it is typically seen as a bad thing now in the in the yeah. text saying, being like you've made all this money, what are you doing with it? It just sitting on it is not good enough for the market anymore. You're losing it to inflation. Yeah, you're losing to inflation. Why aren't you your return? You can invest that. You get a better return on investment. Where is your big bets for what the next five years is going to be? All this stuff you hear it constantly. Oh, Oh, that's why all these companies don't run with profits, really, and they put all the money back into R and D or buying things. Um, They uh, they put their money into fucking the Epic Store. How much money they spent on exclusives and whatever else, and the share revenue share change. Yep. Got them nothing. Bandcamp is joining Sound Trader. Oh, they're just, yeah, selling it off to another place there. Yep. Um, but the thing is, as far as I can tell, it's not really around um, people directly making Fortnite or mm-hmm. making Unreal Engine. Um, that makes sense because those things are still wildly popular. Yep. Um, they They just announced today. Because uh, there's Unreal Fest going on, and people are like, oh, what's going to be announced? What's going on? Uh, Unreal is switching to a subscription model for non-game companies. So they can make cinematics for their movies or something? So Unreal is used a lot in movie making now. Oh, okay. uh, Like the, Mand- the Mandalorian mm-hmm. uses Unreal for previs and all wow. a bunch of Disney stuff. They don't have to pay the the royalty it's not a game project there's like weird oh shit and they're just like yeah we're just gonna are their visual visual arts side of unreligion is going to be a subscription base now yeah uh, okay. for that because they weren't but making money off that before then not as much really yeah. it was okay. pretty pretty small um and it's becoming more and more weirdly unreal is becoming more and more of a like de facto like runtime pr- visualization engine Mm -hmm, for movies mm -hmm. um yeah because like the mandalorian and a bunch of the disney stuff um i think this is probably tech is probably spread outside of disney the they call it the volume which is just this giant room circular room with lcd screens all around it and then on those screens are generally projected 3d model (laughs) environments (laughs) and hmm. as they move the camera around it has it's real-time tracking and unreal so that the the screens are displaying what would actually be behind the actors. So it's like not blue screens anymore. It's actual Whoa, stuff fuck. there. They're recording. Fi- they're acting you can, in there and being filmed. Yes. Yes. Oh, it's wild. You can see behind the scenes stuff and they show. They don't. I don't know if I saw behind the thing that they ever said that they are using Unreal, but when they show the software being used visually, I'm like, that's Unreal. Um, yeah. That's mm-hmm. <laughs> that's the editor. I know what that is. I work on it every day. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Epic is trying to make money on that. I doubt they're getting rid of any like people on that side of it. Like, this isn't really the. This is all the stuff there that they were expanding to. From, from pandemic times when everything was booming, uh, things aren't working out as well. They're not making as much money. The metaverse is failing for everybody. Good. Yeah. Um, but there's all these kind of, like, you have Epic going for it. You have. Facebook Meta, you have Google, you have um, man, I can't remember other companies. All these other companies that want to be the metaverse, basically. Um, I I have to confess that I don't quite understand what the fuck that even means. Uh, so I mean, it's kind of dumb in a lot of ways, but so well, that's clear. But I don't still yes. know what it is. So <laughs> that's the only thing I get. They're trying to be capitalistic about what the next version of the web is going to be, and it doesn't mm-hmm. work. So, like, think about the early early internet was made by a bunch of scientists um, mm-hmm. yep. between labs, and they made the protocols that the web is built on, yep. like HTTP, um, all of all of that core stuff that we use mm-hmm. that is made by someone. 
they all these companies are betting they're like well the future of the internet and connection is going to be they shorthand it into the metaverse but what's whatever foundation the next version of the internet would be built on and they want to be the company that owns it oh, okay well that's doomed it's a big, to fail it's a big <laughs> it's a big bet uh, yeah, for all companies, and I don't think it will ever work that way because it's you're seeing that it's no one company is able to really materialize that. I mean, that's the whole thing where crypto is all booming yes. as well. Yeah, exactly. It was also yeah. part of this whole thing, um, yep. the Web three, the blockchain. Yep, all this stuff, but it's not really working out because guess what? It doesn't work all really well whenever it's like one company trying to monopolize the whole thing. Um, so right and like tell people like this yeah it's i don't know it's they bad. want the tech they want to have the make the foundations and then license it out to everybody else to make i all feel like yeah uh, and i know you know i don't know what i'm trying to articulate is that when someone makes something for a specific purpose that is going to be the one thing everyone uses it just that is seems to never be the thing no it, it always just never works yeah, it's like, you know, even like Fortnite, for example, like yeah. was save the world. It wasn't really Fortnite. And they're like, well, let's just copy PUBG and see how that works. Like you bumbled into that, you know? And yeah. And it wasn't. I don't know if I said it on here um, now knowing about that. It wasn't even like Epic deciding to do that. It was a few people inside the Fortnite team being like, hey, I wonder if we could make something like this. And they they cobbled together in a very short order. A, a demo slash prototype of a battle royale Fortnite, and Crazy. people internally were like, "This is great." <laughs> um, <laughs> this is you found the fun. Yeah, and then they just started piling resources onto it and yeah, getting right. it out. Um, yeah. But it wasn't like some high level decision of being like, "This we need to change our our direction." This is the new thing. No, it was That's just exactly people, it was people point. on the ground that were like, "Hey, you know what could be fun? Let's try it." Um, and that speaks exactly to your point. Um, yes. It's usually like, the, it's, you know, grassroots is the wrong term for it, but like it's something that's like organic and small. And like d the the story that's written 20 years later is like, we had no idea that's what the fuck was going to happen. That's just what it grew into. Yeah. Um, so. So. <laughs> uh, Crazy. Yeah. But so many layoffs. That was a huge layoff. Um, Creative Assembly was oh, yeah, another company were, mm -hmm. that. Working on hyenas. They did. They didn't even get a game out. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. I know. They, they got like announced, right? It's like a code name. Yeah. Hyena, like hyenas. They had, yep. They had, uh, they had, um, I don't know if, I think they had a beta test. I don't even know if they had a beta uh, test. They might have had an alpha. They definitely had a test of some sort because I remember a podcast talking about it recently where they okay. had participated. Um, and they're like, yeah, it's okay. Whatever. But who needs another extraction shooter? Um, which I think is what hyenas was meant to be. It was an extraction shooter, which is, I still think that genre has a lot of space to grow and figure out. Um, but I don't think it's going to be, there's a lot of these games that are, I would say are fast following on that genre mm -hmm. uh, and just trying to be more of the same with like very small variations. Yep. And that's not enough. Um, you, you, because there have been some newer ones, uh, Dark and Darker, um, which is the more fantasy, is a fantasy base. Like, it even abbreviates to D and D. It's very D and D based. Oh wow! Um, mm -hmm. uh, extraction shooter through like dungeons and getting loot and getting out, um, mm -hmm. kind of thing. It reminds me a lot of, uh, like, combat wise, is a very Skyrimy, um, mm. Bethesda, Bethesda style of exploring. Well, people are talking about Escape from Tarkov as one of the Escape from Tarkov was like ones. the first, first main yeah. one. Mm -hmm. It's still yeah. huge. Um, I've watched a lot of streams of of Tarkov. It's a I get the the loop and why it's really an interesting genre. Um, it's just there's been a number of things that have tried to do it again and done the thing of like, well, we just want to improve on Tarkov that, that they just don't get traction. Um, it's going to need to be something wildly different or have such huge marketing behind it. Like yeah. probably Bungie with Marathon, because Marathon is an extraction. Shooter. Well, and that's you know thinking back to that, um, thinking back to the Sony whatever it was the showcase. That's the only one that stands out as going to make it, partially because Bungie's name. But really, you're right. That's the marketing behind it, and that just how much they're gonna blitz that. They're gonna um, blitz it, and now they're owned by Sony, and Sony's gonna blitz it through their consoles. They're mm -hmm. also gonna probably make sure that it's of a certain quality bar before every show. Oh yeah, for sure, um, for sure. <laughs> 
well, and the rumors are that um, Bungie is the one that was looking through Naughty Dog's um, yeah, multiplayer we game, and we're like, there's no fun in this. <laughs> this yeah, is but, not, you know, trust us, please. Uh, yeah, that was the thing I saw there. Earlier this year, Bloomberg reported that development on the multiplayer game had slowed down due to poor internal review from Bungie. <laughs> mm-hmm. After Sony as after Sony acquired them, but like, look at our other multiplayer games. Um, and I mean, I I would do it too. Destiny two for his, oh God, the players love to hate it so much. Oh yeah, um, but they still but play they it. Still play. They still play yep. so much of it. Um, it's. I mean, it's they, fucking... it has it has a thing. It has a good grip. It has a good loop. Um. It has good moment-to-moment gameplay. Yep, like, it really does, and it translates really well to keeping people engaged um, and coming when back. I th- and I think I put on my on Discord at some point. Uh, my wife was interested in oh, what the fuck, how we got down this rabbit hole. But we're looking at like the top three games that everyone on my friends list had played, and then we checked mine. And num- number one is fucking Destiny, which surprised the shit out of me. But I did play a. What was ton mine? Of did you look at mine? I did. Uh, I can't. Diablo it's not was coming. There? It was Diablo, Diablo three. Was- Probably Diablo, Diablo 3. 3. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Diablo 3. Um, you know, it pales in comparison to 5,000 hours spent in um, Overwatch 2, but you had a you had a good amount of numbers. In yeah, I bet. That, yeah, no, I'm trying to... My Diablo 3 hours are split pretty, pretty evenly between console and PC. Yeah. So basically, whatever it was on console, double it. Double That's it, what it was, yeah. It was probably on PC. Um, yeah. Because I was... I'd, hmm. Yeah, um, I don't know what else would be more than that because I don't tend to just play a lot of the same games over and over again. Yeah, on, no, but I, on I'm, almost, I'm so it's like I'm it's it was sure Diablo three. I'm sure it's a bit second and third are just really long games. Well, um, no, um, so it was Diablo three is number one, but it was Minecraft was number two, and I was like, that's oh yeah, really that's kid. my son. You know? Yeah, that, yeah, that, exactly. that my son playing a lot of Minecraft, which is yeah. funny. Um, <laughs> My stats aren't aren't true there. I wonder if I can even pull those up online. Or on yeah, the, I'm looking at my app right now. This phone see app. See, I've got. Where are you? There you are. It says you were online two months ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, are I you playing this. Diablo Four on PS Five? Yeah. Like oh, I thought yeah. you had on PC for some reason. Nope, PS Five. Okay. Um, because uh, after playing so much Diablo Three on console, I was like, this is just how I want to play the game. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't see. I can't see your stats here. Uh, that's too bad. I'd have this to get is on riveting con- po- content for the podcast. Yeah. I know, folks, but, uh. but yeah, there was the the Naughty Dog thing from that. Yeah, the contractors uh, got laid off, and it sounds for the most part that the Last of Us multiplayer standalone multiplayer thing is just um, going away. Dead. Yeah, yeah that's just dead. Dead. Yeah. Um, well, it's interesting because. Um, uh, what the other thing that I was thinking about some free to play. Oh no, it, it was, um, it was Fortnite where I was kind of talking about how the growth wasn't, you know, as much as it had been or whatever. And it's kind of, I don't know, like starting to come down to earth, maybe just a little bit, even still making a shit ton of money. Um, but Sony slow following that trend of the live service game, this what 12 or 13, they want to put out in the next two years or whatever, like with Jim Ryan, uh, retiring and like, live service maybe not being as lucrative or as popular like are they still Mm going to commit to that strategy don't know don't know oh that's the thing uh jim ryan retiring Mm -hmm. yep there's another layoff except it's not a layoff layoff. he's just out he's like i can't live in europe and work in north america (laughs) yeah and i i'll be honest i don't see anyone that's like super beat up about it (laughs) No, God, no. They're not, they're not unhappy. <laughs> they don't see anyone being like cheering or celebrating, but they're like, okay, yep. good, bye. We'll I go. mean, he wasn't like PlayStation makes a ton of money. They're popular. He's the business guy. There's no personality. So, he, you know, he had, had a couple dumb emails, but he hasn't been egregiously one way or the other. Like, you know, he's not he's not a Phil Spencer, that's for sure. Um, and they yeah. don't really seem to want that anymore. Although I did buy the uh, kind of funny T-shirt they've got going for the week, which is shoe for president. <laughs> That's funny. That's yeah, funny. I love it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I mean, it's been a, a little bit of a sad week, and it's been a sad week. Sla- 
Well, I mean, in general, there's been a lot of layoffs. Um, oh, across tech, right? You know, how yeah. many people do you know that I know that, you know, lost their jobs? Yeah, tech has been has been beat up quite a bit, mm-hmm. uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, and, of course, that hits games as well. Um, and games yeah. are a generally a volatile industry to begin with. So, yeah. But you make more money than Hollywood. My uh, wife heard uh, that on NPR sure. this week, and she was like, wait, what? <laughs> I was I like, mean, they, do, they do. <laughs> they make a lot of money. Uh, which oh, is kind but, of the, the the frustrating thing is like how much money games have made recently and make in general, and then to like have this much layoff is just it's, like it's not spread out though. No, most, that's true. Most you're of right, that money right. is that's in your point. FIFA's and your CODs, um, yeah. your Roblox and Minecraft. Yeah, that's a good. Point. Uh, Fortnite. Uh, that would be that. And if they consider mobile game stuff in there, then add I King in do. there yeah. mm-hmm. and your Genshin's and like it. I'd probably those are the those are the uh, one percenters making like yep eighty percent of the game revenue right there. Uh, that we're is all a just good picking point. Up, picking up the scraps. Mm-hmm. That is a uh, good point. Uh, which is speaking of, oops, sorry, go ahead. go ahead. It's just unfortunate, but it, it is. I don't know. I don't know if that's better or worse than movies, really. Uh, I mean, it kind of feels the same, right? They're the big blockbusters, and the rest are kind of like yeah struggle to make back their budget. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. Um, so. But speaking of other games, uh, you've been playing some games this week, and so have I. What have you I been have. playing? Well, we'll start out with Cyberpunk. Uh, yeah. I'm well into Phantom Liberty. I'm towards the end of it. Okay. Um, it's real good. Yeah. Like, it's really, really good. That's um, good to hear. And just the game itself, I'm like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is... Uh, I'm not going to say it's as good as like Baldur's Gate three and it's writing overall. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, all those parts of it are really good. Um, they've gotten quite a bit better, but there's just an immersion quality to the game. You're just like, yeah, this is my like cyberpunk power fantasy right here. And they ran with it and just let you be live in that world and have that power fantasy. Um, Cause yeah, I'm really strong in the game and it doesn't i don't even care i'm like whatever i'm wiping bosses out in three <laughs> seconds doesn't matter i have invested in tons of cyberware and upgraded everything yeah that's what i do um do you find really, that that's significantly improved over the because you played it at launch yeah i did i beat it at launch um right. i do think it's significantly improved i think mm-hmm. it's just a better okay. it's just an overall just better game um it's smoother to play the flow is better the there's a lot of small changes that just add up to just a better game. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, yeah, sometimes when I say the writing is generally is good and sometimes it falls down a bit is just when it tries to be a little bit too edgy at times, but oh, I can yeah. tell that the writing got better as time went on when they're doing it. And that kind of fades away in a lot of ways. Um, and they kind of CPR finds that the line to ride there where you're like, yeah, this is, dystopic capitalistic world um and we're not gonna tip over the edge into like satire completely um yeah because it, it it it's like serious more serious satire and sometimes it tries to be like tongue-in-cheek and it's like that no nah, this isn't working as well um but yeah i've put a lot of time into get to phantom liberty because it's not just right at the beginning of the game, you have to do some work. Um, yeah, did you to get restart? to it? Did you start yeah, a new character? I, I yeah, completely awesome. started a new character. I wanted the experience, just kind of how it flows. Um, and yeah, uh, playing through it, Idris Elba, fucking amazing in really? it. Um, okay. Yeah, his performance is great. Um, Keanu Reeves' um, performance for Phantom Liberty is a level above what it was before, just the base game, which I already oh, thought nice. was good. Like he mm-hmm. just like yeah. And the way there's more nuance to the characters in Phantom Liberty. I mean, it's a spy thriller, so there's a yeah. lot of mm-hmm. there's a lot of nuance to what they're saying and not saying. And you dig into um, Keanu Reeves playing Johnny Silverhand, like aspects of that character that I know from reading my old cyberpunk books. I know what the character is and kind of their backstory, but um, they start digging into to some more nuanced parts of the backstory, um, mm-hmm. which is really cool. Um, 
but overall, I've really been enjoying that. I think I have probably another hour, hour and a half of Phantom Liberty left um, before I'm done with it. Um, I sat on a decision point um, for like 10 minutes, <laughs> just pause going like, what the hell do I am I going to do here? <laughs> And they didn't um, do the typical CDPR thing where like you're on a timer for this. No, decision. I mean I said escape, so I went to the menu. Oh yeah. Um, so I just everything paused while I was yeah. just sitting there contemplating, being like, I have to I have to choose a path here, side with a character, side with one of two characters. What am I going to do? Um, because there's no coming back. I'm sure. I've heard people uh doing the save state and then coming back to the, do the other one and sure. it's like um and I hear they're both wildly amazing so yeah the one um, i chose i'm like holy crap this has been good um yeah uh, it feels it feels like the cyberpunk uh spy thriller i never knew i wanted mm-hmm. or needed mm. and it, That's pretty it, high it, it, it is and like the set pieces they pull from like they do a nice job of playing homage to things of those spy show thriller genre and cyberpunk genre so there's like set pieces where you're fighting a giant spider tank like in ghost in the shell um and then there's other parts where you feel like you're in a james bond movie and then maybe a mission impossible movie in another set piece um they they really know the source material and make you feel like you're in playing through those kind of Mm -hmm. playing through a movie where it's not a movie you're actually getting to take part um and guide it and the writing's good the dialogue's good um yeah and god it's gorgeous so pretty it looks Um, i mean i've been playing it too um i'm probably four hours in okay and i chose to do the basically the fidelity the ray tracing mode yeah um and i'm just you know notice i'm playing on ps5 it looks really really good have um, you had you've had the city had it raining in the city with the ray tracing on? You know what? I don't know if it's rained yet. No, it I rains. I, oh, mm. it's so like all the neon, all the glow reflecting off like the slick streets and oh, like that's beautiful. It is. It's really gorgeous. Uh, I've stopped in photo mode plenty of times, just taking taking some pictures. Um, the the city. I will say my the thing that I've been most impressed with, other than um. Uh, okay, I'll just say the thing that I'm most impressed with so far is that Night City feels like a real place. <laughs> like it mm-hmm. really does feel lived in and there's a history to it. Um, almost like uh, Revachel, I think that's what it's called. The city that's in um, Disco Elysium. Like that's much sure. more contained. It's like several, yeah. just a couple blocks or whatever, but it's like just this rich history to it. And this fucking feels lived in, man. Yeah. And it's I mean, got a it's got a game where you play as Roach, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's true. Um, that's hilarious. Yeah, I forgot about those until you posted that. I was like, oh right, <laughs> all those you have uh, the playable arcade cabinets because yeah. of course you do. Um, I mean, I started my first one. I did as a nomad, so I only played mm-hmm. you know through the part where you meet Jackie and does all the fucking cutscene kind of cutting in and out, partying and whatever. Yeah, that's where I stopped in my first playthrough. Um, and then this time we did Street Kid, which feels way more authentic to the story, to be honest, from my limited yeah. knowledge of cyberpunk or whatever. Um, but it's just cool to just be there and be in Night City and then start doing all these different quests. And I don't know, I wish the driving and the handling of the car was better, but I realized I could get out of the fucking car mode and like get in like third person kind of. Yes, um, that's what you're driving. Be, mode. In, Thank be God. in third person. It's way easier yeah. in third person. Yeah. And I will say that the. I mean. Cars handle wildly different depending on what the car is. So, oh, interesting. I actually, okay. I actually um, am using motorcycles most of the time because I just like how they handle. And the one I have now is basically the Akira motorcycle. That's what it looks like. Oh, because that's why awesome. not? I want. I'm in the yeah, cyber hell yeah. I want to be in the Akira motorcycle. I'm living this fantasy. I'm living the whole fucking thing. Like, my whole fucking <laughs> thing. It's called the, Kus- the Kusanagi, which is a reference to Ghost in the Shell, who is oh. the main character. And Ghost in the Shell is a major Kusanagi. Um, so yeah, I'm just full. Like when I play, I'm almost like, I'm all in, I'm going to do this. Um, and I would say the motorcycle hand, that, that specific motorcycle, I just really like the handling of it. Um, mm-hmm. and I know I've driven plenty of other cars in the game now as well. And I'm like, yeah, certain ones just handle better than other ones. Um, 
and that that's just part of it. Um, but yeah, I will say it is very lived in city. The city generally just feels alive enough. Like it's all made for you as the player. You, it's not like a simulated ecosystem of a city. It's oh yeah, you, no, you are the main play. But it, while you're in it, the way things happen around you and where things are and the side conversations, it does feel like a living place. Um, and they do a good job of making it feel that way. And it's huge. It is so big. It takes a while to go from if you're just going to drive from top to one, the north side to the south side, it takes a while. Oh, okay. Um, it's a it's a big city and very clear districts um, that all have kind of have their own feel. And you can learn it. Um, yeah, I've really, really been enjoying it. I'm glad that the CD Power was able to bring it all back around. Um, and they didn't just give up on this. Um, well, I mean, maybe it's just... for the future, they'll just be like, hey, let's not listen to what the investors want and just tell them to F off. And we will release the game when we're ready to release the game. Right. Make good games. Um, take time on them. The, the person who's leading it, Dan Tangelo? Dan Tangelo? Does that name sound familiar to you? Um, I'm, I don't think that's the right name, but I know... Some of, I, some of those syllables are right. I don't know if they're in the right order. And I added some syllables that are not right. But it was someone who worked on um, Mass Effect 2 DLC or um, Jaws of Hackon DLC for Inquisition. Okay. Um so he's the one, like the I guess the lead narrative guy or the lead something on this. Okay, and it sounds like he's staying into Cyberpunk too. Yeah, um, to Pro- Project Orion. I saw a thing that they an interview with him basically, where he's like, can't say anything, just that there's no more expansions for this one. We yeah. are starting pre-production or are in pre-production on Project Orion, which yep. is. The next one on Unreal Engine 5, because there was someone asking, like, is that going to be a big jump? Like, you have to rebuild everything for an Unreal Engine 5. And he's like, you'd be surprised how much we don't have to um, and how much can just come across. Um, more And also speaking of Unreal being a completely open, like, you get full source code access, so it's easy for them for all the time that they've spent in systems and the Red Engine. They're like... Yeah, we can we can bring that some of that into Unreal Five mm-hmm. without much trouble. Like, um, we have good engineers that can do that, so they're working on it. Uh, Gabe Amatangelo, Tangelo, Tangelo. See, I had a couple of syllables right. Yeah, <laughs> that's about all. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it's just it it's good. It's fucking good. I'm only four hours in. And it's like, okay, I get this. I'm putting a lot of points in the cool. I just decided to go one direction. I'm going to do a little bit of body maybe and some cool and just see what happens. Yeah, um, I would I say could... look at the trees and just be like, what weapons do I want to use? Mm-hmm. Because the idea. trees very specifically are tuned to bonuses to specific we- weapons. I think cool mm-hmm. is like pistols, which is why I Pist- like. So. Yeah, pistols and like throwing knives I think are under cool as well. Oh, cool. Okay. Maybe or that might be reflexes. I don't know. I'd have to look again. And then but bodies definitely pistols, like SMGs sure. and stuff like mm-hmm. that. S- not SMGs, um, assault rifles and mm-hmm. shotguns and things like that. Um, but body's good if you just, you know, want health. Yes, exactly. And That's kind of why I put some into body. Yeah. Um, the voice actress for V is really good. I think it's a voice actress from Persona 5. Um, is that okay. ringing a bell? That's, why Actually, is that I haven't head? looked on the who the female V was. Are you playing as a male V? No, female. Okay, yeah. Female V. Who is the voice actor? Female V voice actor. I'm very curious, actually. Um, female V. Charami Lay. All right, and then put that name with Persona 5. See what we can see what we get. She was in Diablo 4 as additional uh, voices. Oh, um, Diablo 4. Uh, there's a better website. I'm looking at IMDb. That's not a good website. Um, behind the voice. Um, oh, that's a cool website. Behind the, the voices voice who are about to strike. <laughs> uh, that's true. Um, okay, yeah, she was Makoto. Um, uh-huh. 
in Persona 5. And she's going to be Makoto again in Persona 5 Tactica in a month. Nice. So she is Manon in Street Fighter 6. Oh, was, uh, that's interesting. Sonia in Tears of the Kingdom. Um, really? Yep. Oh, fuck. Okay. She's in a lot. Um, she's busy. She's busy. She's good. Uh, she is v in is a lot. Good. Yeah, and I would say that she's even better in Phantom Liberty. Like, okay. they're, again, I just feel like they came back years later to record this stuff, and yeah. they're more lived in the character, and it shows. Right. Um, leveled up a bit. Uh, they were, let's see. Um, wow, they're in a lot of stuff. Holy crap. Um, they're in Lost Judgment. They're in Deathloop. Tales of Arise. Oh, um, Jesus. Top tier. Uh, they're in the latest Sailor Moon stuff. They're Sailor Venus. Okay. In the latest, the new Sailor Moon. They're in Monster Hunter Rise. Oh. <laughs> um, wow. Yep. Uh, Persona 5 Strikers. Cyberpunk. Holy cow. I'm just kind of impressed. I'm like, she has been in a lot of things and a lot of different roles. Um, mm, very cool. That is cool. Um, she does a good V, v though. Um, oh, yeah. V is so good. So good. Um, oh, she was, yeah. She was in Three Houses. Um, Fire Emblem oh. Three Houses. She was oh. Rhea, the, the priestess. Oh, I don't know if I remember Rhea. Um. You would know if you saw the picture. Um, mm -hmm. Or her breasts out or something? <laughs> no. It's not a playable character. Uh, well, neither was that one teacher. As, there you as, go. As far as I know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the yeah. high priestess. Yep, or yep, like the, the head of the church, I think. Right? Of the dragon? Yes. Correct. Forgive me, uh, Father, if I have thought about the high priestess. Boops. <laughs> there you go. Um Holy crap. Okay, so yeah, the V voice actor. Very good. Done a lot of things. They clearly, uh, when they hired her, hired someone who had done a lot. Um, yeah, wow. And continues to do a lot. So, very, very cool. Um, but that I played that a lot. Um, what else have I played? Um, what have I been playing? That was mostly, it's been mostly Phantom Liberty. Oh, I played a little Snap today for the first time in a long time. Oh, fuck, I forgot about Snap. <laughs> the PC client is, like, completely refreshed now. Oh, like, okay. It just, it's widescreen. It, it's a full PC client now, not just a port of the web, of the, mm -hmm, the phone. Mm -hmm. But then they uh, started a new season that interested me. I don't know if I'll continue playing, though, because I'm like, I don't feel like playing all the time. But that's uh, Elsa Bloodstone. Um who was very Halloween themed vampire hunter, monster hunter. Oh, interesting. Character. Okay. Um, had a neat, neat character effect. And I'm like, oh, I could get it, but then I have to be willing to, you know, play snap consistently. And I, I don't know if I want to in that way. Yeah. Um, but it was neat to go back in. I played a few games, won a, won a bunch of games. Um, Good. Didn't even build new decks. I was like, well, I'll try oh, out my null my null deck. Does that still yeah. work? Still works. Nice. I'll try out my like one cost swarm deck. Still work. Still works. Okay. Good to know. Good to know that there's some staples that still work here. Um. But uh, that's mostly what I've been been playing. Can't think I've, of anything else. I've been playing Cyberpunk, so I'll move on from that. Uh. My daughter got way back into uh, Tears of the Kingdom, so we've been playing. She got to um, the Wind Temple, um, okay. and when she got there, she was so excited because that's where I was with. And she said your daughter's name, and was very excited about that memory. And um, nice. she's unlocked several of the locks by herself. I helped her with one. Uh, there's two more to go. So she did two, I did one, and then there's two more to go, and then there'll be the fight with the dragon. Um, so she's way into that, and she's um, lamenting that we can't do on the Switch what we can now do on the PS5, which is fucking game-changing. I haven't talked about it yet, um, but <laughs> we we before Tears of the Kingdom, we were doing Kina, Bridge of Spirits again. We were like, I don't know, like five-sixths of the way through that game again. And then she put it down to play Tears of the Kingdom. So I was like, all right, you want to switch? That's fine. Um, but both controllers, they've it's now been an update where you can use both controllers at once. 
So yeah, I remember that. Yep. Yeah. So when she's running around playing and sometimes she gets stuck, uh, I can just keep playing with her or I can control the camera for her while she's doing something else or I can uh, aim while she pulls the uh, bow and shoots. Um, so we're doing she's more involved in combat now because I can do some of the more finicky stuff while she just focuses on the bow or swing at her uh, staff or whatever. And it's been really transformative. Um, we're able to play more or she's able to play more without passing it off to me. Um, and she's getting much better um, in, in having some of that guidance. Um, and it's just, it's been really great. Um, so we've been playing that. And then I played a lot more Sea of Stars because I took it on the playmat. Mm, that's right. And it is so good. It is so interesting how, uh, you know, I think it's been sold as like a Chrono Trigger kind of like homage or whatever. Yeah. And it, you know, it starts off that way, I guess, and it probably continues that way in, in some, you know, there's like 30% DNA of Chrono Trigger and 30% of Super Mario RPG or whatever. But that does so much of its own stuff, like very um, small mechanics throughout. Um, for example, the thing I just unlocked is some enemies are immune to like physical attack, but when you hit them, uh, they drop these, I forget what it's called, it's some sort of orbs. And then you can charge up with those. Another character can charge up with those orbs and then do a physical attack that's charged up by that. And then it does do damage. Um, so it adds like another layer of strategy to the battles. Like there's so many layers of strategy to just this Chrono Trigger type battle. It's kind of nice. It's really interesting. Um, it's also the difficulty is tuned in such a way that I keep dying. <laughs> like oh. I'm, I'm having a hard time keeping my health up. Um, you really like there was a, a battle where I, I, I approached it like seven different ways. And finally, the seventh time I beat it um, and it was really it was fulfilling, but it was also like that was a lot of time. <laughs> so there's a sure. um, I forget what they call it, like a relic, I think is what they call it, which is basically just a difficulty modifier where you can just have, you know, basically double your health pool. Uh, and then recharge after battle instead of having to use your resources to fill up your health. So I turned that on. Um, so it's made it a little less frustrating in terms of restarts because I have more health, basically. Um, but it's it's interesting. I'm going to try to turn it off when I get leveled up a little bit more. It just felt a little bit um, specific in the early stages where you really did have to take advantage of all layers of the strategy and kind of do it correctly in order to, to win. And that was a little annoying. Um, but other than that, it's great, fucking gorgeous visuals, man. Great um, animation and decent writing. So, yeah, definitely. I think I'm six hours in to Sea of Stars now. Um, I, yeah, I'm enjoying it. And that's uh, it. That's all I've been playing. Nah, well, I mean, it makes sense, though. Yeah, that was a good plane. Oh, yeah. Plane. It was great plane. Uh, I guess it's not that long of a flight, though, for you. So, no, it's an hour up. It's just an hour near. I go back next weekend. To the okay. same place uh, for the same thing. So, are you doing uh, the same single day thing again? Yes, I am. <laughs> oh boy, it does make for a long day, though. I'll it give it very that. much does. Yeah, uh, you know, I may spring for a hotel and just stay the night, but it kind of takes me away from my family a bit more than I should. I'm already away a lot doing work and stuff. So, so well. So yeah, very that's, cool. That's it, yeah. Well, this is episode 401 of Prof and Dev Play. Dev and, Jesus, what the <laughs> fuck? Prof and Dev Play Games. I think I'm having problems talking. Uh, if you like us, please rate us on your podcast service of choice, and we shall be back next week. Uh, boy, what's happening in the next week? Anything, any big releases coming out? Spider-Man's on the horizon, so is Mario Wonder. Let's, but maybe let's not see, anything. let's see. I mean, tomorrow is Assassin's Creed Mirage. Oh, shit, that's tomorrow? Uh, well, it's October 5th. Oh, actually, today is the third. We're recording. It's the fifth, but I think it launches. I don't know what time it launches, so it might yeah, be tomorrow night. That snuck up on me. Yeah. Um, weird thing where I'm like, the review embargo is in tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> which I'm like, I don't, reviews, I don't like. Man. I don't like the review embargo being the day. No, before it I don't comes like out. that either. I was gonna um, go look and see if I hit my fantasy critic, but no, tomorrow. It's not yet. Um, okay. But that comes out this week. I, I hope it um, I hope it reviews well because I'm interested in playing yeah. that. It sounds um, like a nice tight contained twenty hour experience. So yeah, Jesus, um, tomorrow. And then yeah, and then, we have oh, wow. Super Mario. Then it's really like two weeks. Then we have Super Mario Wonder, Marvel Spider Man Two, um, City Skylines Two. Um, oh yeah. 
that's Ghost all Runner like two. the same yeah. week. Yeah. Ghost Runner 2. And then the following week is Alan Wake 2 and Ghost Runner yeah. 2. And there's been some previews, like some uh, streamers and YouTubers got access to play Alan Wake 2. Yeah, and it's all just it been yeah. so positive. It looks it looks good. People are just like, "This is great." Um, <laughs> I'm boy, this year I can't play it. I'm gonna be like, I'm too freaked out to play another Alan Wake yeah. at this point. But that'd be cool to watch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but especially because I'm like, man, it's all tied into the control universe now, and like uh-huh, uh-huh. some big giant shared remedy um, game world. Oh my god. Um. Oh, so yeah. weird looking at my fantasy critic and not seeing Silk Song on there. <laughs> it's not coming, dude. It's no, after coming. this Unity shit, fuck no. <laughs> like, oh, that's true. Are they, on, are they on Unity? They are on Unity, yeah. Oh. Yep. As oh. soon as I heard that, that's why I dropped it. I was like, this ain't happening. <laughs> this is. Oh. Uh, they're going to switch. Are they going to switch fucking engines and take another four years? Um. Oh, who, oh that's not good. That's not good. No, that's not. I mean, you also on your fan. You have Forza Motorsport theoretically is coming out in a week, and wow, yeah. no one's talking about that. <laughs> Not much. That's right. Um, but it is coming out. I know. Do you have any more counter picks on yours coming out from me? You have Eld. Oh well, Jesus. An Avatar. <laughs> and then Avatar, which could also get delayed. You know, I put Elden Ring on here because I'm a moron. Uh, uh, I, I mean, there was a good chance Elden Ring was hit this year. Let's be honest. I, I there, there was a chance. There was a chance. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, no, nah, there's not a. I don't think there's a lot of hope for me mm. on this. Um, no. I think some some stuff got. I mean, once you picked Redfall, <laughs> you kind of got. Yeah, screwed. yeah, I got screwed on Red- that one. It was way worse than I expected. It was um, really bad, and Cocoon was way higher than I thought it was going to be. Eighty-eight. Uh, I, I'm looking forward it, to playing that. Yeah, that one looks really good too. Um, and you're able to sneak out getting like. Uh, Mario Wonder and Tactica. Yes, I'm very. I, actually, Mario Wonder is going to do probably pretty well. Although I did get Mario RPG, so you know. I know you I'll said. Take it. Well, I tried to get Mario RPG, and it's like you can't get this one. I was like, okay, and I just didn't come back. And then came back, and I saw it on your list. I was like, okay, I guess. And I feel like a number of games. I still say that Space Marine Two is probably not launching this year. They're just mm. not updating. It's too close. Yeah. Um. But you got it's a, like, it's a lot like it's a lot like what Silk Song, where it's just like. They're not saying anything, but yep. that's probably <laughs> they're probably not going to say anything. It's just going to yeah. end up the year and just continue on um, a lot well, like from soft with with the Elden Ring. Expansion. Elden Ring. Yeah, exactly. Like they're just like, yeah, we're not saying anything. Move on. Yep. We don't need to. Uh, you also got screwed with Plucky Squire, who decided. Not uh, to yeah, they did. Got that's a big fine. old zero on that one. I'll take a zero. Oh. Zero is better than negative. Um. Well, yeah. Oh, you know what? Plucky Squire is better than Redfall. <laughs> yes. Oh, Jesus, that's terrible. I do have Spider Man Two. Spider Man Two is coming out. That's gonna be great. Yeah, you're gonna get like high high eighties or maybe low nineties. Yeah, we'll see what uh, that one does. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm good. pretty sure you got this one. Yeah, for our Up first time, there. it's been fun. Looking forward to trying it again. Um, yeah. Now we know how it works better. I think. Yeah. Um, uh, that'll be an interesting. Yeah. Uh, but cool all right right, folks thanks for listening to us mumble through our uh fantasy (laughs) we'll see you (laughs) next week all right folks and hey if you're ever feeling down at least you are not kevin mccarthy (laughs) that's true (laughs) all right folks see you next week later everyone